Welcome back. In Python, like in most programming languages, we use conditionals to make our program behave differently based on a condition. Uh, conditionals are one of the flow control tools uh, that we will use over and over during our career and programming journey. Imagine a typical situation in the real world where you need to take a decision in your daily life. It's most of the time based on a condition, like if tomorrow is sunny, I'll go out to the beach, or if it's Sunday, uh, it's, if it's cloudy or cold, I will go to a museum, or if it's a rainy day, I'll stay at home and study Python, otherwise I'll decide later what to do. As you see uh, in the example that I've just done, there are there is a pattern that repeats over and over. If something happens, I do that. If something else happens, I do that. If something else happens, and something else happens, I do that. Otherwise, I do that. That is pretty much a control flow structure uh, that let us decide what to do based on the weather. In Python, this is called an if-else statement where the if and the if expect the condition to be true to execute the code block inside them while the else block runs whenever none of the condition are evaluated to true and let me explain that with the practical example and let's see the if block in action so let's create a variable and assign to this variable the string Fabio, uh, which is my name. If name is equal to Fabio, so the double equal sign uh, is used for comparison. So if this is equal to uh, Fabio, um, and we put a semicolon and then our code block inside the if statement and say we want to print this message if I can type format name okay if we execute this code now what we see is hello Fabio here in this string so um, how does it work? The first thing that we want to use is uh, to define this if statement is the if keyword. The if keyword is followed by a condition and then a semicolon. So the if keyword, the condition that must evaluate to true, so the boolean value true, that can be even uh, a true value but doesn't make sense like that so then they must evaluate to true so let's roll it back so if true this condition we print this statement so the next line after the first line of the uh, definition is indented to the right so the first line ends with a semicolon and then we indent the body of the if block uh, to the right and that can be done in using the tab key or in your key in your keyboard or using an equal amount of spaces so each of the line that we follow and it's indented to the right so like that it's part of the if block so if we print that we get Hello Fabio, hello again, so these two, but if this is not in the um, in the block, so it's not indented to the right, this is going to um, run anyway, even if this name is not Fabio, like say Serena, and if we run the code, we get only the hello again, because this state this print function is outside the if block and since this condition is false here we will never execute this code 
So, um, what else could we do? There is another part of the um, condition, which is the else clause. Uh, like in our real world example, we use the otherwise statement. Here, we replace the otherwise with an else keyword and that execute the code if none of the condition of the if block is true so in case in this example the condition is not true so if we add the else and then we indent to the right this block of code we will see that when we run the code we will get only a log gain but can be a name to make this more cool no nope. format okay we can now put the other name this way so we will get a hello serena uh let's um so this is a, a real a really basic example uh, that can help you to understand the basics of conditional you can use condition in, in many different ways and uh, as you will see later when we when we are going to study in the next episodes uh, loops and functions so let's um, do another example um, like in our real world example we use many time the keyword if to decide based on the weather what to do we use we can use an if an l if block so an else if uh, L if stands for else if to specify another condition to execute based on another piece of code to execute based on, on a different condition. So let's make another example. So uh, let's define two variables and we assign to these variables a dictionary with the user name equals to the string Fabio and logged in, logged in, logged in key, and we assign to this a let's say true without print, without quotes, and then we define another variable. Always with a dictionary, let's copy that and say Serena. Okay, now let's imagine that we want to check if the logged in status of this user is um, true or false. Logged in, so we want to check if the user, this variable, this key contains the um, value true or false, depending on if the user uh, is logged in on, or not into a system, for instance. So um, let's use the if statement. So if Fabio uh, status, uh, and we want to grab this Boolean value uh, here. So we want to grab this key copy that so if this condition evaluates to true since this is a boolean we will get true as a value as a result so we indent the body of the code that we want to run in case this condition is true to the right and then we use the print statement to um, output the message let's say is format on the string and we use this key here okay so in case this is true we got this message here let's try to run it and see what we get Fabio is currently logged in because this variable is true if we change this to false you see that we got nothing. So this hello Serena comes from the previous example. So now let's see if we want to check if 
the status of Siri is logged in or not. So I'll if and then after the DL if we can specify another condition. Uh, so in this case we do the same thing we did here just replacing the name of the variable with the Sarah status and the semicolon and then we indent the body to the right and let me uh, copy what I want so you don't have to watch me typing all this so in case um, this is true we got this different message and let's say we want uh, an else block that means everyone is online so okay let's run this code and see what happens so fabio is currently offline but serena is online so we got fabio offline and serena online so we didn't print the first message because this evaluate to false but this is true so we got this message in here um, so if we play with the logged in values of both dictionaries fabio status and serial status we will get a different message every time uh, we set one of them to true but what if uh, both our user in our example are logged in let's try so let's say this is true and that both have all the way to true so let's run the code and we see that we got this message Fabio is currently logged in and we only get the message inside the first if block and because it's at the top so we might want to use a different approach in case both of the user are logged in in our real world example uh, instead we also say that if it was cloudy and cold we would go to a museum here we check two conditions so uh, is it cloudy and is it cold uh, and that's what we are going to do with the with another keyword which is the end keyword that lets us concatenate two different uh, conditions so if both conditions return a true value the code inside this block will be executed so let's change this first here let's do it in another line so let's do that first okay that was um, conditional so if block and here we go and if so if this is if else and then we got here the uh, l if and then here we will use the end keyword so we are going to concatenate two uh, conditions so let's grab this again and let's keep this two as our um, reference so we we see both outputs so now what i want to do is change this to an l if block and then we add here at the top a different condition so if Fabio status let's copy that so we don't have to type it so if Fabio status is logged in that's the first condition and we grab the other one so serial status logged in that will be uh, the case if both values are true we want to print a different message also this time so it's going to be this message that we want to print so in this case we have both um, values in this dictionaries uh, set to true so we will see this 
block of code so you will see this message printed into the terminal when we run the code so okay as you see here the first the last line is Fabian and Serena are both online now that is the message that we printed in here instead as you see in the previous line uh, this one we had this output Fabio is currently logged in which was this output here from the previous example so we added uh, the else if block and up here we use the end keyword to specify another condition that we want to check so uh, we changed the first block uh, of the previous example to an if block and we added on top to that an if statement that checks both conditions and when they evaluate to true we run the code inside it so we concatenate both conditions using the AND keyword, this keyword here. So we got IF AND another condition. We, so we got IF condition AND condition. So there is another keyword that we can use and it's the NOT keyword. And the NOT keyword actually turns things upside down. So let's see it in action. And let's say not keyword. So let's uh, create a variable that has a boolean uh, value of true. So logged in is equal to true. And let's make this check. So if not logged in, so we're reverse the things that we want to check so if it's not logged in but here we got true so it's if it's false actually is what it's asking we print this line of code we must indent the code after the if um, statement to the right and then we use the else close to uh, to output a different message in case the user is online so in the first case if it's not if this is not true we print this block otherwise we print this one so let's run the code and we see that we get user online which is this one if we change this to false we run the code user not online Okay, so is this false? Yes, but we use not, so we run this code. Hope, it, hope this makes sense. We have another keyword, and it's the OR keyword that lets the code block run if one of the condition evaluates the true. So we saw before the end keyword that lets us run this block of code uh, if both these conditions are true, instead the OR keyword, no, okay, OR keyword lets us run a block of code if one of the condition is true. So let's make a quick example. So x equal to one, and let's check if it x is, uh, is greater than 5 and x is less than 10 and then we print the message so we print this message if this condition is true and if we do x equal to 5 or x equal to 10 like that so if this value if the value of the variable x is equal to 5 or is equal to 10 then we want to print this message here so let's copy the message so we print this message here number 
and the number that we get is out of range, for instance. Uh, and then we use the L block to say to spit out a different message. So let's run this code. So we got x equal to 1, and what we get is number is too small. So we got this code block here. Let's try to uh, say 6. We should get this message because 6 is between 5 and mm, less than, uh, it's greater than 5, but it's mm, less than 10. So we run the code. Name error, x is not fine. We need to save. Okay, the number is 6. So we got this. Uh, the message printed by this code block. Then let's try to say it's, I don't know, it's 10. And number 10 is out of range. So we got this output here inside the statement. This is just an example because if we use that as 11 and number is too small it doesn't make sense but anyway you got the um the idea i mean if we want to make this work we could say um and if uh, x is greater than 10 then we print for instance number is large and then we use the format method on the string to output the x so in this case we will see number is 11 large number 11 is too large okay that makes a bit more sense so um, this is how we use it let's see um, so this is how you use the or keyword so you check if one of these condition is true or false and then if it is false but this one is true the code will execute if this is true but this is false the code will be executed anyway inside this block so let's see um, how we could use that all together with a quick and simple project Let's say project. All right, uh, let's define a name variable and we attach to it an input function that lets us interact with the program. So we type here the message that we want to output. Type your name here. And then we use the lower method on the output so the output of this input function will be a string always a string so we use the lower method to make sure that we convert everything to lowercase so we can uh, make our um, conditionals uh, without having to worry about the uh, case that has been passed here so by the user and then we got age and say um, input type your age okay since we uh, since since we want to make a comparison between uh, letters so between with the age we need to convert the output of this input uh, to a, an integer Okay, so um, let's write our first block. So the if name is equal to, let's say Fabio, and age, age I said, is equal to 40, or name is equal to Fabio, and age is equal to 40, then we print this message here. 
Okay. Then we missed an equal sign here. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, I don't know, an if block uh, with a name is equal to bar it. And we say, sorry, you have been banned to this site. <laughs> For instance, that's just an example. Um, again, let's see if uh, age is less than 18. Say, sorry, you don't have the minimum age to adjust this system. Um, let's print that. Make sure you indent everything to the right, and you, if you use spaces, you must make sure that all the spaces are equal. And in this case, okay, I'm using the tab, and let's say another message, and we print a welcome. In case that's just a user of our system, we print the message welcome and the name of the user. Let's run this code and see what happens. So we run the code and we see that the terminal is now stuck here and it's waiting for our input. So we type your name, say Fabio, and type your age and say 40. And welcome Fabio, you are the admin. Let's try again to run the code with a different name and see what happens. Uh, Serena. Now here in the terminal, an age 38, welcome Serena, so Serena is recognized by this program as a simple user in this case, so it just outputs this message. Let's try again with a different name, let's use the name that we banned from our system. I'm going to say Boris, uh, I don't know, uh, 50. Sorry, Boris, you have been banned. And uh, that's pretty much it uh, for this episode. In the next video, we will um, I will show you uh, another control flow tool called Loop. Uh, I'll see you there. Bye.